I thought it'd be fun to create a chart, a graph showing the history of U.S. debt versus inflation versus interest rates and all that because, uh, you know, all these people think inflation is is, uh, is happening because of the debt and whatnot. And uh, there's, uh, where's the evidence for that? Where's the evidence? So uh, what I've done is I've just taken the uh, the info uh, from various, from going back to 1929, the amount of debt the U.S. had, the debt to GDP ratio, the 10-year rate on the treasuries, uh, the actual GDP numbers, the nominal GDP change year over year, uh, the real GDP, unemployment rate, inflation rate, and we just, we chart them. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you that uh, there's no evidence at all that says a debt rate will lead to inflation or a decline in the value of the dollar. I'm, look, I'm not saying it can't, but there's no evidence that says this happens, does that happen, none. So if you look at the debt rate, here's a U.S. debt, and, uh, and that's just in, in visual because I'm very visual, and you can see uh, the debt is going up extraordinarily high, right? And you'll see the interest rates, the 10-year treasury. So while the debt was going up, you can make a case here that look at the interest rates, and that was in 1982. The interest rates, 14.59. Uh, oh, my goodness, in the 10-year, the debt was $1.1 trillion. Ah! And then the debt kept going up, and the interest rates went down. So all the economists learn who are now sitting in the uh, the Ivy Tower, all right, they all got trained in this corridor right here. Debt was going up, and you can see the debt was going up from two hundred sixty-six billion to three twelve billion to nine hundred eight billion to one point uh, was that nineteen eighty two one point one trillion. They're all trained to say, well, debt goes up, interest rates go up, because you can see debt was going up and interest rates are going up at the same time. Now, a new set of economists are coming down, and that's the whole point about the modern monetary theory is whatnot, is that you're saying, look, what this this the, what they were trained on in these 50-year time frames from 1929 to 1979 did not work the way they were trained because you see the amount of debt now. Now, debt is at $24 trillion, is actually at $25 trillion now, and the interest rates are now at 0 0.75. It's actually at 0 0.63 right now. And so you can't make the case that increasing debt leads to increasing interest rate. There's no evidence on that at all. I mean, the evidence is right here. But there's also more evidence on the other way that increasing debt leads to decreasing interest rates. So you can't say one leads to the other when we have the exact opposite of that happening. We do have increasing debt leading to increasing interest rates. But we also have increasing debt leading to decreasing interest rates. All right. So let's keep going. Debt to GDP ratio versus 10 year treasury. This is actually even interesting. So, oh, my goodness. There you go, big man. Pablo. Good boy. Oh, Pablo says, if you're talking econ economics, I'm going to be part of it. And so what you'll see here, the United States debt to... <laughs> He's licking my ear after he probably licked uh, some dogs or sniffed some dogs' butts, and I'm sure I got coronavirus now. If, uh, again, I don't know how you have uh, scared wearing a mask if you have pets. I, I don't get that. We either beat as many. So in World War II, we had debt to GDP ratio of 119% in 1946. And you can see the 10-year rate was all of 2.37%. Uh, 2.19. All right, so debt to GDP was two, was not essentially we had more debt by twice as much debt as we had in GDP, and yet the interest rates were really low. 1980, let's see, 1982 debt to GDP was 34%, significant decline, and yet the 10 year rate was way high. All right, debt to GDP now is above 108, debt to GDP, and interest rates are way low. So, if anything, debt to GDP. We have three instances, high debt to GDP, low interest rates, high uh, interest rates, low debt to GDP, high debt to GDP, low interest rates. So for those who say interest rates must go up because of debt to GDP, i.e. people won't want to buy our debt and whatnot, well, we have no evidence of that at all. We have the exact opposite evidence of it. So I just stop, stop, stop. Look, I'm not saying it can't happen. It's not happening in Japan. It hasn't happened here, uh, so stop that. It's nuts to say, oh, my goodness, interest rates have to go through the roof because all the debt. Well, there's no evidence of that. None, none, none. If anything, it's the exact opposite. The more debt to GDP we have, the lower the interest rates have been. The higher the debt to GDP, uh, the lower, uh, the more uh, uh, debt to GDP. Yeah, there you go. The lower, more debt to GDP, the lower their interest rates. Uh, the lower the high the debt to GDP, the higher their interest rates. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so here we go. Debt. Uh, to real GDP, this is after inflation. You can see, look at the real GDP is going like crazy, crazy, crazy. 
Again, 1929, the Great Depression, World War II, and then it's somewhat flat here, but you can see, let's just click on this guy right here. GDP is negative in 1970, not much. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, four point, is that, uh, yeah, negative for that one year, but look, we got uh, GDP 5, GDP 4, uh, GDP 7.9 in 1983, GDP was negative 1.4 in 1982, and yet you can see debt to GD to uh, to real GDP. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any. I don't, know, I don't know how you make an equation there that high debt leads to low GDP. I guess you could. You can make it a case that there's look. We have high debt. We have lower GDP. Here we had low debt, but we had more volatile GDP. So I don't know what you'd make of that. I don't see. You can't sit there and say high debt leads to low GDP because we had low debt. We had negative GDP. We have high debt. We have low GDP. So out of, there's no positive correlation that you could take away from that. Debt to real GDP, you can't say one leads to the other. I, I don't believe you can. Now, unemployment and inflation. So it used to be the lower the unemployment, the higher the inflation would be. Again, the economists who raised, were raised on this model from 1929 to 1979, the Phillips curve and stuff, will say a low unemployment is high inflation. And here is the unemployment rate. And you can see... Unemployment rate in the Great Depression, we had 24.9% in 1933, and yet we had inflation. It wasn't inflation, all right? We have high inflation in 1946, and we had low unemployment, all right? Uh, we had unemployment rate 1.2. That's during the middle of the war. All right, so there's two things that kind of offset each other, but then you go back to uh, 1974, we had inflation at 12%, and we had unemployment at uh, 1974 at uh let's see 7.2 all right so we had high inflation uh but we didn't have low unemployment no we didn't so we had high inflation uh high unemployment 7.2 is pretty high all right here we got again we got high inflation and we had unemployment that's that's in 1946 hard to use that for an example here we got uh, inflation 1.6 and we have unemployment five so again uh lower unemployment certainly not high inflation uh, here we got uh, inflation at 2.3, unemployment at 3.5. The lowest has been since the Great War. I mean, it's crazy. So, I mean, again, if anything, it's the exact opposite. 1994, inflation is 2.7. 1994, unemployment was at 5.5. You know, on the high end, but historically, it used to be 5% was full employment. Now, those days would have been shattered. But again, there's no was a quid pro quo and no correlation leads to this there's no correlation to causation it's just there's it's just, there's none you can't say high unemployment leads uh to low inflation or high employment leads to high inflation there's just there's no correlation between the two again go back to well, i hate to let's just go right here 1979 inflation 13.3 percent unemployment was at uh Let's see, 1979, six. I mean, that's that's on the higher end. Uh, so you think higher end, you'd have lower inflation, but we have actually have high inflation. So let's keep going. Debt to inflation. Again, high debt leads to high inflation. It's simply not the case. Debt to inflation. Here's debt in the, the, the blue, and there's inflation right there. Inflation is going down, down, down. Debt's going up. Inflation is going down. Uh, what else we got? I guess that's all we got here. So anyway, I thought that'd be pretty interesting to share with you. Uh, we don't have any evidence whatsoever of a debt leading to high inflation or debt leading to high interest rates. I'm not saying it can't happen or debt leading to high inflation uh, to, or, or because uh, people don't want to buy our bonds because high interest rates, which uh, put people out of work because governments can't or uh, uh, companies can't finance their growth. There's no evidence. that. And then if we just look at Japan on top of our own uh, in America, the evidence of anything is the other way. It's just no other way around that. I hope this helps. It's uh, pretty interesting to me. So for you inflation bugs out there, eh, maybe look at the real numbers and say, yeah, maybe we're wrong. All right, we'll see you.